Welcome to another edition of Dan 5-Minute Factoids. In this edition, we will be discussing pulmonary embolism and the use of warfarin. Here's the question from the diver that I'd like to answer directly and also in principle. The diver asks, I had a pulmonary embolus in December 2018 and following the pulmonary embolus I had a transient ischemic attack which is a mini stroke in the middle of January 2019. I've been on warfarin since the pulmonary embolus and according to my specialist physician I need to be on it until the middle of June 2019. I'm a 27 year old female if this happens to help in answering the question. But my specific questions are these. How long after taking warfarin should I wait before it would be possible to dive again? Is it safe to dive after you've had a pulmonary embolism before? And if so, to which depth would it be safe? And lastly, is there a fitness or health evaluation that can or should be done before considering diving again? I'm going to answer this gradually and then provide a summary at the end. This diver is actually hoping to dive in Thailand in November, so there is a very specific reason and also a specific time frame in which they'd like their answer. It's not so simple to provide an answer though, and I have some sympathy for the physician and their reticence to give a clear answer. First of all, a pulmonary embolus is an obstruction which is an embolus of the blood vessels of the lungs and it can be caused by fat, air or in this case a blood clot called a thromboembolus. If it's caused by a thrombus then the thrombus came from somewhere and usually it's from the legs, the large veins in the legs, a condition called deep venous thrombosis. That's a whole different discussion and we discuss it elsewhere and we'll refer you to links to that. But the resulting obstruction in flow can be significant and the cardiac output of blood can be curtailed by a significant extent and it can be life-threatening. Now initial treatment focuses on the cardiac impairment. In other words, to get the circulation going again, to bust the clot if necessary, and to help the lungs with ventilation and with fluids. After that, then the focus is on both treating the clot and preventing future clots. The concern in this particular case is that there was a clot that went into the lungs which caused the pulmonary embolus, but there was subsequently a clot that actually uh, obstructed the blood vessels in the brain, meaning it caused a mini stroke. Now it may be that parts of the clot that was still in the lung broke off, went all the way through the circulation and ended up in the circulation of the brain, or it may be that there is another risk factor that causes clots in this particular individual. In spite of our best efforts, in spite of all the advances of medicine, the risk of dying as a result of pulmonary embolism, regardless of the cause, is about 30%, which is very high. So the questions, which were as follows, how long after taking warfarin should I wait before diving again should really depend on why warfarin was required in the first place. In other words, where did the clot come from? Why was the clot formed? 
And why did the clot not only affect the lungs, but also result in a mini stroke, which fortunately was reversible, which is what it means when we say a transient ischemic attack, a passing event of an interruption of blood flow. The second question was, is it safe to dive after having a pulmonary embolus and to what depth? Well, again, the question is, if there is a clot and if there is an obstruction to the function of the heart and the lungs, it really doesn't matter how deep you've been diving. The effect and impairment may not be survivable. In other words, it doesn't matter how deep you are, it may still result in a diving fatality. Now the last question, and perhaps the most hopeful one. Is there fitness or health evaluation that can be done before considering diving again? And the answer is yes. The evaluation should include lung function assessment, underlying conditions which would determine why the blood clot formed in the first place, the anticoagulant status, in other words, if the warfarin is stopped, is the risk for further clotting also stopped? Or does it need to be changed to a different type of clot prevention strategy? There should be a specific study as to why the blood congealed or clotted. There should be an assessment of exercise capability and of course cardiac status. So in summary my recommendation would be to get the specialist physician to actually contact Divers Alert Network and come up with a joint decision that would assist in an appropriate risk assessment for you. We hope that you found this useful and that you'll subscribe to this Dan channel for further information, not only on warfarin and diving, but on many other conditions that may be affected by diving. Thank you.